everyone, welcome back to Nightly Nerds. I'm Tote, and no ginger. And I'm playing Feather, this fun little game I have on Steam and I believe is also on the Switch. But yeah, just chilling. So one of the things I talked about in a recent episode, but I'm gonna bring it up again because you know what? The odds are we only have a handful of fans that will actually make it from episode to episode. So here we go. I'm gonna talk about the old UFOs. And I totally have flipped to the script on that, yo. I, I'm, I used to be uh, very skeptical of, uh, when I say UFOs, I'm not talking necessarily saying flying saucers or it has to be aliens, but, you know, unidentified flying object, the more, the more literal term of UFO. And I used to always believe that, hey, it was swamp gas or it is a weather balloon or it was just military vehicle or misreading of radar or secret something, you know, but there is no way it could possibly be aliens or trans dimensional beings or interdimensional or something. You know, there's no way. I just didn't believe it. Or I thought it was just very, very, very unlikely. Because why would they even come here? But I went down that rabbit hole. I looked into the UFO stuff and I started listening to Navy pilots and Air Force pilots and qualified people who've had their experiences that were just completely, you know, there's no way to explain it. And after going down that... Man, these clouds are low today. Going down that rabbit hole and stuff that NASA's come into contact with or, you know, things that are kept uh, top secret but have recently been released, you know, through Freedom of Information Act and whatnot. I am just convinced that there are some kind of... some kind of being that's not us. It's not... It's not human. Whether it's of this planet or not, I don't know. This dimension or not, I don't know. Extraterrestrial or not, I don't know. But it's super powerful. It has technology. Is it them? Is it their drones? Is it some kind of fact-finding thing, but I believe that they're here and they're just observing us. And occasionally as we get better and better with our with our own tech, we uh, we come across them. And uh, we get we spot them for a second and they break away and they get away. And they jam our radar and they move at incredible speeds and they change direction at, at will, breaking what we consider the laws of physics. And I'm just convinced at this point that yes, there are aliens. Now, People who get abducted, I don't know about that business. You know, I think a lot of that is mental illness or seizure or disease or wanting attention. But I could be wrong because I used to feel the same way about UFO sightings and now I flipped on that. I believe Bob Lazar to a degree. I believe a lot of these Air Force and Navy pilots, they saw something that was unexplainable, that was not of this earth. I am just convinced at this point that is all real. We are not alone. I like to imagine that there is uh, some kind of um, it's a way of saying it. They're not. They're, no, they're not. They're not malevolent in any way. Maybe benevolent. Uh, maybe they, they would actually want to contact us more, but. They have no ill will towards us, they're just observing, waiting for us to do that thing, you know, kind of following that prime directive, that Star Trek prime directive. Waiting for us to reach the point where we can fly faster than light. Where we can break, you know, that barrier that we're stuck behind at this moment. Whatever it may be. Make, get to that next level. Manipulate time and space. Gravity, whatever it is. And then they're going to reveal themselves to us and say, hey, you made it. Now join the intergalactical whatever. You know, where we all have peace and love. I'm hoping that's what it is, at least. I feel like we're on the cusp of so many things, you know? Like, we're on the edge of, of, of curing aging and all kinds of diseases. You know? It's just, it's an incredible time to be alive. I feel like we're like the guinea pigs of the future. We've got these smartphone devices. We're, gonna, we're the first generations to be using them. And there's gonna be that, they're gonna be that thing I think is gonna, is gonna lead us to being cyborgs. Eventually it'll just become part of us. It practically is already. But we won't be holding it in our hand anymore. It'll just be part of us. We'll all be part of a network. Eventually, we won't have currency anymore. You know, I like to think of it as a Star Trek. I'm, a, I'm not a huge Star Trek nerd, but I, I like the idea of it. When our currency is no longer actual cash, it's just your goodwill. What have you done for humanity? That's what upgrades your standing in the world. But everyone has got every their basic needs will be provided for. You know, I'm not a I'm not a communist or a 
or socialist, but I just feel like eventually it's just we're gonna, we're gonna head that way as we get more AI, robotics. Eventually we won't need laborers. We won't need to do these menial tasks. They'll just be taken care of and we can concentrate on other things like the arts and pushing further in science, breaking into the stars and pushing beyond our solar system into for deeper into the galaxy, maybe even to other galaxies. Or maybe we'll go the opposite way, you know? Maybe we'll push as far as we need to get so we have resources that we need at will and we can keep our Earth going near indefinitely. Find other places to colonize in case things happen here. But then we'll turn inward. We'll go into the inner spaces, you know? We'll have... You know, we'll have a virtual reality that is so real that we can live there and live thousands of lifestyle... Life, you know... Lifetimes in mere seconds going through advanced simulations and... Woo! Crashed. And we'll fly better than I fly with this bird, you know? Push our human existence to the next level. Man, I'll probably be dead for it, but it's gonna be an amazing thing, I think. I, I, I wanna be, I'm gonna look on the bright side. None of this Debbie Downer stuff. I don't, I don't think we're gonna kill ourselves off. Because if we were, we could have done it years ago. At least I think we won't. You know, we are, as I've heard Joe Rogan say, and he probably picked it up from somebody else, we're like this caterpillar, and we're weaving this technological cocoon for the next species, for this next form we're going to take, and we don't even know what it is. Does a, does a caterpillar know it's going to be a butterfly? Does it know? Or does it just know it has to build this cocoon? And that's what we're doing. We're just pushing innovation and technology, constantly going to the next level. And look how good it's gotten. Have you ever seen a little kid on a Kindle or an iPad or tablet or phone? They just know what they're doing. It's just intuitive for them. It's just older people that struggle whenever something new comes out. You should see me on Discord. I hate Discord. <laughs> I have a hard time using it. I finally figured it out, but it took me a long time. I'm, you know, I'm in my early 30s, mid 30s maybe now, but, you know, these kids, they just hop on and it's like, it's like it's second nature for them. And I feel like there's just something right about it, you know? It's like, you know, this these functions there's not the form over function thing's not really a problem when it comes to the technology we have these days i've flown through these mushrooms a lot today and i'm a crow imagine being able to go into like this virtual world where you are a crow and you could basically live a crow's life its whole life from from hatching out of the egg till it dies and it could just maybe it could be minutes or seconds in your in your actual biological life. That is if we're not already in a simulation. But what if we could have simulations within simulations within simulations? Because who knows? Maybe that's what we are doing. Ah, to be a seagull. Having those avatars that we can just jump from life to life. I feel like we're on the cusp of it, you know? We're just so close. Like at any moment, there could be a huge breakthrough and we can leap forward like we've done the last century with every little breakthrough. I like to think optimistically. So here's to the future. <laughs> Anyone who's still watching me ramble up to this point. Playing this lovely little game, flying around, being a little birdie. Changing my musics, changing my bird type. And if there are aliens out there, and I hope to like to think that they're all, you know, because if you think about it, right, if they got to the point where they can travel from planet to planet, do they really want to come and invade and take over places? Or what are the odds that they'd be that, could you be that aggressive a race and get to the point where you could travel across galaxies to different solar systems to find planets where that are inhabited and what, you're just going to take over them? Why would you do that? If you could fly from planet to planet, from galaxy, from, from solar system to solar system across galaxies, or even galaxy to galaxy. The universe is your oyster. You could find wherever you want. At that point, you probably have the technology to terraform wherever you want. Just find those Goldilocks zones, and boom. You could probably manipulate gravity, so time's not an issue anymore. Travel's not an issue anymore. Why would they want to take over? They're just observing us because it's fun. We're going to fly through it! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that was fun. I don't know why I changed the music. I was actually starting to like that music, but yeah, we changed it up. Let's cut through the island rather than going around.
Yeah, so why would they want to take over? They're just here observing us. They're just watching these monkey ape people slowly tinker their way forward. Maybe they maybe they're impressed by our with our progress. Maybe we're going faster than they thought. Maybe they helped us along the way. I don't know. Maybe they're depressed at how long it's taken us and how stupid we are and how we have to keep fighting and killing and murdering each other and hurting each other and going off to frivolous things. Who knows? Maybe they see some douchebag with no following on YouTube playing a let's play of a game that nobody nobody cares about and they think, what a waste. But I don't know. I just think that they don't think that. Maybe they're a little bit like us. Maybe not. But on that happy note of being optimistic of the future, I'm going to end this episode of Nightly Neds. As always, I'm Tote, signing off for Ginger. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hey, did you like that video? Well, if you did, click the box on the right for another. Click the box on the left for a playlist. Of course, you could always just subscribe by clicking the link in the middle. Come find us on social media. There are links in the description below. Don't be afraid to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. I'm Tote. I'm Ginger. See you then. Bye.